One of the most popular drum sounds today is a low and fat snare sound. Now, here's what you need to do if you want to switch to a low snare sound just between songs in a matter of seconds. Hey, it's Andy here and welcome to yet another drum sound video. As I've just said, today it's about the snare drum and especially low, fat, beefy snare drum tones. Now, of course, there are quite a bunch of scenarios where you have the time to prepare a snare drum for this exact sound. Like for example, if you're in the studio and you can tune the drum low, choose the right drum head, use the muffling you want. Also, like change the microphones. So you have, for example, you could bring in a kick drum mic for just this little punch in the low end. But what we're looking at today is what if you play a gig and there's just one song in the set for where you need a low snare drum sound. So, for example, this is like the standard tuning that you're playing throughout the whole show. Not that low, not that fat. Nice, medium snare sound. And now there comes the ballad or there comes the moody song for the low snare sound. Here are some tools and some tips and tricks that can come in very handy in this situation. First up, Mr. Muff's Muffin. If you're familiar with our videos, you might know those little guys, the Mini Muffs, and Mr. Muff is basically a one-man show, a guy who came up with quite a few very cool muffling tools. Now he's working with Rohema and they just recently came out with the Muffins. Um, and this is a very cool tool. Simply slides onto your snare drum, this felt ring makes sure it stays in place, and this is what it sounds like. Without it? So you can see within a matter of seconds, you change your sound completely. Since this guy covers the whole surface of the drum, it will take away some of the attack. You get a little softer attack, but also it takes away almost all the overtones and everything, so you get just a beefy low snare sound. Let's continue with the second tool. Those are tools by Big Fat Snare Drum. And the name says it all, it's a company that's just about tools like this that will help you get a big fat snare drum sound. And right here we have a donut and just a classic Big Fat Snare Drum that covers the whole surface. And you can also buy those as like a pack of two, so you get both options. And basically, before I play, just so you know, this one, since there's a hole in the center, the stick will still hit the drum head. So you, you'll get the initial original attack of the stick on the drum head that you've chosen, while this guy, you hit the Big Fat snare drum, so it will change the sound of the attack as well. Now, no more talking, let me just play those and compare them and you can decide which one you like more. For me, both work really well. I think I prefer this guy, but that's just a matter of personal taste. And having those with you in your cymbal bag or wherever, same with the muffin, um, will just help you out throughout gigs. If you can just like 
pull them out, put them on the snare, and you're good to go. And since there's this little, little space here, it's easy to get them off. So there's no like messing around with whatever problems you have with dampening rings quite often. It's very easy to get them off. Now those are tools that are especially designed for this purpose, but what about some DIY solutions? Here is three of those. Okay, so all of those basically fill in the same purpose as the Big Fat Snare Drums and the Muffins. First up is one of the classics, just an old or new, whatever you have in hand, at hand, drum head that you just put on your snare drum. You could also cut off the rim if you feel that this like second aluminum ring on top of your snare drum um, hinders you while playing or is just in your way. But for the simplicity now, I'm just gonna put it this way and it's also easier to get it off since you have this um, rim. Second thing, classic kitchen towel. Just put it across your snare. You can then decide how much you want it to muffle by just like folding it. So for example like this, if you'd have clamps here to keep it in place, it will have quite a lot of muffling but still the attack of the drum head. Um, I'll show you both options, once all covered and then half covered. And then something people usually don't think of, but what works really well as well, is just some sheets of paper. So just go to your printer or whatever, wherever you <laughs> store your paper, get a few sheets, put them on the snare drum, like, that's not a solution that will last very long because like you'll have a hole in the center if you aim well. But for example, if you're playing a gig and you have nothing at hand but there's your drum sheets lying around, use the ones with the songs you've already played, um, put them on the snare drum and you'll be surprised how well it works. Once again, with those, I'm also gonna show you two options. One, where it's only one sheet, and then let's maybe go with three. So you see, the more paper you add, the more muffled it gets. Here's what all those sound like. Now all those work pretty well and it's just very easy to bring a kitchen towel with you or just a few sheets of paper. But as you can see, there's already dents in here. So let's say this is more of a one song solution rather than something that will last you for multiple shows. Um, but it works well. Now before we end this video, here's just a few more thoughts and a little trick that might help you as well. So whenever you do this, keep in mind that, of course, there's a tool on your snare drum that changes the sound of the snare, but also if you want to get the best result out of it, you need to change the way you play. And to show you what I mean by that, um, let me just grab one of the tools, maybe we'll go with the muffin, and um, there's a few things that apply. First of all, um, rim shots do not sound good with a low tuning. It just sounds choked and 
To be honest, I play rim shots all the time with an open snare drum, but once it's a muffled snare, only the center. Second thing, I tend to play snares, muffled snares, not as loud as open snares, just because I think or I have the feeling that it gets the body more out if the attack isn't that loud. Um, and that's also something you need to keep in mind, that the sound guy, your sound engineer, um, they will have to deal with a completely different signal at this point. So maybe get them into the boat earlier on. I don't know if this phrase exists in English, but it exists in German. Um, get them in, let them know that this is gonna happen, so they're prepared. And if they have to do some EQ changes or need to get the snare louder to get it through if you're playing softer, they know it beforehand and they can react to it. Of course, best possible version would be to have a second snare where they can put on the best possible microphone, the best possible EQ and compression settings, but if you come with one snare, you want that second snare sound, make sure they know they have to change something beforehand. Maybe also get it on during a sound check, make sure they know what's gonna happen. Um, and then one thing I like to do is, for this scenario, turn around the stick because I just have the feeling it gives me a little more, like a little more beef to it. So now for you to see what I mean, to hear it, um, I'm gonna play the snare open with rim shots. Then I'm gonna play the snare with the muffin with rim shots. You'll see it doesn't really work. Then without rim shots, and then I'm gonna turn around my stick and show you what this little more beefy sound is like. And if you have a little more time to spare between the songs and you can grab a tuning key and do small changes, um, there's a very easy way to get this to work even better. And this is by just detuning the one or two lugs that are closest to you. Just get those, get them all the way out or just to like the lowest possible point. Um, Keep in mind what screws you worked on so you can go back to your initial tuning like afterwards really quick. Um, but this will increase the effect even more. Let me just quickly play the snare as it is right now with the muffin on and then do those two screws and show you what I mean. Pretty cool, isn't it? Because it's only two lugs and you can do this in in no time. Like afterwards, of course, yeah, you need to make sure that you can get back to the tuning you had before really quick, like, like this. But once you've figured out how this works, it's just slide it on, grab a tuning key, get the tension down. And as quick as that, you change the sound of your drum kit completely, since the snare is like the most crucial, the most sound defining part of your kit. Now, what do you think? Do you have any other tools? Which option do you like most? Do you have more DIY solutions? Let us know in the comments, and I hope to see you in one of our next videos.